So we are live now. Hello, everyone. As we have global audience, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Great to have you in our SAP Community YouTube stream today. Sustainability with SAP is a new topic category that we would like to bring up to the attention of the SAP community. And the webcast today is the next episode in this category. Today, we would like to talk about how to start your carbon accounting journey with SAP Sustainability Footprint Management. Our speakers are Gunther Rotermel, who is Co-General Manager and Chief Product Officer for SAP Sustainability, and Nico Wodke, who is Senior Product Manager, SAP Sustainability Engineering. We are grateful to have them as dedicated expert for the session today. My name is Larissa Brinkman from the SAP Global User Groups Organization, and I'm your host. Before handing over to our speakers, let me share a few housekeeping rules. We kindly ask you to post your questions via live chat, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. To post your question, you need to sign up with your YouTube or SAP community account. The additional materials of this session, like PDF, will be available under the same link in the description to the video of today's session shortly after the stream is finished. I will also post the, all the relevant links in the chat. With this, I wish you great interaction and kindly ask Gunther to take over. Yeah, thank you uh, very much and uh, welcome to this session and welcome to this important topic of, of decarbonization. Um, before we actually have a look at the product and, and get deeper into it, which is the main purpose of our session today, let me quickly recap uh, our approach to uh, carbon accounting and decarbonization in general. And I will not uh, spend a lot of time on, on the why question. So I think we are all uh, absolutely clear on, on why decarbonization is so important um, from a legal perspective, but also even more from an optimization perspective for human mankind. So when we as SAP look at this topic of carbon accounting or decarbonization, it is important to see that we want to embed sustainability in general and this notion of, of, of carbon into business processes. We believe that we have to manage resources in a, in a proper way, resources like a CO2 footprint or um, other environmental footprints. And that is why we sometimes also talk about reinventing the R in ERP. So the resource term is important. And that's what you will also see in all of our products that we not only calculate and manage new kind of entities like uh, we do it with, with carbon in sustainability footprint management, but also take action in the appropriate context, in the appropriate business process so that people can really act upon it. Now ACT is an important keyword and we typically classify our activities and what customers also do in, in these three uh, major steps, record, report and ACT. Because of course, indeed you, you need to first have the proper data set in place and, and it's clear that this is a challenge in many situations. Once you have the data in place, you can report upon it uh, both on your own ambitions, but also on um, regulations that are up. And then let's not forget, at the end of the day, the goal is to act. The goal is to reduce carbon. The goal is to decarbonize the entire value chain. So that's our principle. If we move on to the next slide, then um, uh, of course, this has to be seen in a broader context. And, and I will not go into all of the areas, but we 
have four major focus areas in sustainability overall. There is the climate action pillar, which is the focus today, but equally important, um, circular economy, social responsibility, and, and holistic steering and reporting are also key areas that we have to tackle and that are also very much linked to the topic of, of climate action on, on various touch points. We summarize the capabilities which we have in the uh, you know, more narrow sense for sustainability under this term of SAP Cloud for Sustainable Enterprises. So think of this as a family of of products that work together well, but also integrate well with the rest of SAP's portfolio with SAP S4 HANA, as well as with the business technology platforms and other parts of our portfolio. So that is the bigger context in which we operate. Now let's zoom in again. And if you move uh, forward um, one, one level and uh, we'll see that in action in, in a bit, but it's very important to also take a look at how are we building these things and, and how do they come together? So this family of, of cloud products, which I just described, is actually a, a modular suite of modern SaaS solutions if you double click on it, right? So we have uh, for these major areas, which I described um, applications out like the sustainability footprint management, which we'll see in a second, but also uh, other products in the space of steering and reporting, or take another example, the SAP responsible design and production in the world of circular economy. What is very important is that on the one side, you can consume these capabilities in a very modular way, right? This is all modern open SaaS applications, API based, and you can use these products as you need them in your project and then build on, uh, upon each other and, and, and realize value quickly. But we also have this principle of reusing important artifacts uh, from, for example, your ERP system wherever possible, because you have already defined your organizational structure, you have already defined your master data. And of course that remains relevant in this world of sustainability. So we make use as much as possible of additional data and then calculate and, and, and provide new data points on top of it. So that's the combination of, of this modular suite. And of course we are using um, state-of-the-art integration technology and, and we are making use of also more advanced capabilities, uh, also AI capabilities on top of all of that. And at the end of the day, the goal is to embed sustainability in business processes, but also with all of the new dimensions, all of the new data entities which we need. So that is the key principle which we, which we apply. And of course, we can later on in the Q&A uh, also go, go further. And of course, there are also, there is more to come. There's more innovation in the pipeline. We also launched, for example, a capability which we call SAP ex uh, Sustainability Data Exchange, which is, as the name suggests, a possibility to share, for example, carbon data between different companies and organizations so that you get actual values from your supplier where needed. Again, we can come back to more details later on, but I would say let's move on one more. Now, when we, again, take a deeper look at the topic of carbon, uh, let me explain a few principles which also matter for us and which we hear a lot from the interactions with our customers. First, of course, you need to be able to indeed manage your and calculate your footprint, both on a product as well as on a corporate level. This is what SAP Sustainability Footprint Management does. And you got to be at the same point in time, you got to be able to share this data because we all know how much footprint we, we get from our suppliers and how important it is to also be able to hand over footprint information to our customers as we, as we think along the, the supply chain. So data sharing is another important capability, which we again provide in a modular way. But the key principle is that over time, we move from averages to actuals. Now, what does that mean? First, of course, today, we, we all know that in many cases, we operate on, on averages, on aggregated averages. We are using data from, 
from databases like EcoInvent, that's that's good and useful and, and will continue to be the, the, you know, the case. But the more we move forward, the more we will also calculate actuals in, in a based on a on a transactional approach where we we calculate footprint based on material moves, based on energy flows, and bring that together so that over time the percentage of uh, cases where we calculate on on real actuals and make decisions real on real actuals will will increase, while the you know the the percentage where we use averages will decrease. But we will probably live in a hybrid world for a long time, and the product needs to support both approaches and 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 uh, also combine those approaches really well in in one conceptual um, framework. So that's. Um, one of our key design principles, uh, please remember this um, direction to go from averages to actuals. Now, when we move on one more, again, I already mentioned this modular approach, the fact that we are making you know, use of also our technology platform and today and in general in the center of our carbon accounting strategy is uh, the SAP sustainability footprint management, which is the subject of our session, which interacts with the sustainability data exchange service so that you can exchange data in a secure and standard based way, for example, based on WBCSD, uh, Pathfinder standards. You can also use this as part of your SAP business network where you already have connected to a network and also want to exchange uh, carbon data in that context. And then um, I already mentioned the fact that, of course, the, the usage in ERP is a key element to us. And uh, you see here these arrows going from ERP in and out of sustainability footprint management. And that's indeed a reality where we pull a lot of relevant data out of uh, ERP, we calculate footprints, but then we also push back footprint information that we have calculated into the product so that you can you know, use it in procurement, you can make use of it in finance and so on. And that's an important principle. Now, over time, our plan is to take this transactional part of carbon accounting also further in, in SAP S4HANA in our ERP system. And we will uh, go towards what we call a green ledger over time where we are using the footprint information that is, uh, for example, coming out of sustainability footprint management to also really go to a full accounting approach to full bookkeeping of, of your carbon. And that you know, accounting approach will interact very tightly with also the rest of your finance system so that you can make the important trade-off decisions. You can see what are the best ways to optimize your carbon footprint, but you could also do a rating and an assessment of those options based on your financials. So what, in other words, what are the different options doing to your financials is, is the question that we will also answer in increments over time in our ERP system, uh, applying concepts like the Green Ledger. So I think I talked a lot about that already on a conceptual layer, it's time that we take an even deeper look into the product. And I would say we move on to the next slide. And I would hand it over to Nico. Thank you, Gunther. And also, hello from my side. Yeah, so um, you heard a lot now about our overall generic strategy. And now let's really dive into the product SCP Sustainability Footprint Management. So this is really the product for decarbonizing your value chain with the carbon accounting software that can calculate both your corporate as well as your product carbon footprint. And you always um, had first contact now with our record report X framework and for sustainability footprint management, that means that for recording, we are really leveraging existing data that is already residing in your ERP business system, mainly SAP S4 HANA, and we are, have a seamless integration into S4 HANA and really leveraging this data for auto in an automated way replicating those data and then reusing it for calculating environmental impact accordingly 
And based on that, we do then the report part. So really getting auditable product and corporate footprints. And we're doing that really at scale. So at, a, at the monthly level, we are, we are calculating that. And um, currently we are doing it cradle to gate and considering really material transportation and the production activities. And based on all that, we can come then to the act project and really decarbonize along the business processes through providing granular transparency. So across all the greenhouse gas scopes, one, two, and three, getting a lot of insights and by that being then able to achieve a company's reduction targets. And now let's have a closer look how we are actually doing that. So our product can be broken down mainly in those five product capabilities. So we start here at the left-hand side with acquiring business data, then combining this business data with emission factors, the environmental um, impact data. Then based on that, we are calculating the footprints. And after having calculated the footprints, we provide analytics capabilities and then the integration of the calculated footprints back into the end-to-end -end processes. Let's go into more detail. So data acquisition. We mentioned it several times already, we for sure have a deep integration into SAP S4HANA. And what we are doing is um, we are collecting their master data as well as transactional data, meaning really material flow. So what is going on in your ERP, in your S4HANA system? And going forward, we also plan an integration with um, environment health and safety, environment management. So there we then also plan to collect scope one and two data mainly that is um, calculated already with EHNS EM and then reuse this data as well uh, in, in sustainability footprint management. It is already possible to connect um, any ERP, so be it an SAP ECC system so, or even a non-SAP system. So for that, we provide public APIs. And it is also possible to uh, acquire data via file-based import. So um, Excel-based, you can then import data that is not residing in your company's ERP system. And going forward, we also plan a deep integration into the business network. So on the one hand side, this is for sure our own business network, like the Arriva network, but also industry network like Catena X. And by the way, where you see here the star, this always refers to carbon data exchange. And this is following, as Gunther also already mentioned, to the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, Partnership for Carbon Transparency, the PACT standard, where SAP is an acting member and together with other um, global corporations, we are defining the standard. And whenever we are exchanging here carbon information, we are ensuring that this always meets the standard. Now, after having acquired the business data, we need to combine those business data with environmental data. And let's start here um, at the bottom. So what impact categories are we actually measuring today? So we are focusing on, on carbon, meaning climate change, so CO2 equivalence, as this is the, the most burning issues for, for companies and I think also the, the, the society globally. However, we do not want to stop there. So um, yeah, midterm, we also plan to extend to, to other impact categories. So for example, then being able to calculate a water footprint or also other dimensions, like for example, land use. And the emission factors that we are using could um, basically come from three different sources. And this then also fits perfectly to the move from actuals, from averages to actuals that, that Gunther um, shared before. So for sure, most companies today rely on industry average databases. Um, so for example, we have your partnerships with EcoInvent and Carbon Mimes. So life cycle assessment databases that provide industry average data. So this is the, the average part. And over time, we can then really move to the actual part, meaning really getting primary emission factors, primary footprints from your suppliers directly. And then the third option is also to leverage some proxies for materials, which you um, don't have either of the options. So could be you run your own LCA assessments or, or simply do some estimations. And then with that in place, you can actually calculate the footprints. And we mentioned several times already, we're doing that really on, on both levels. So on the product level, as well as on the corporate level. And today we are able to calculate the cradle to gate footprint, meaning we are including material acquisition, production and all transport activities. And similar on the on the corporate side as well, material, freight, transport, and facility. And over time, in the next releases, we then um, constantly evolve in the product, then being also able to cover the downstream processes. So on the product side, product user end of life, so that we are then able to really um, cover the entire cradle to grave or cradle to cradle life cycle. And on the corporate um, 
side accordingly. We also um, plan them to to um, yeah cover all downstream processes and also um, people travel, um, meaning business travel as well as employee commuting. After we have calculated the footprints, we provide various analytical capabilities. So we have APIs in place in the SAP Business Accelerator Hub um, that you can use for integrating the data into any analytical application of your choice. So be it SAP Analytics Cloud, but also a non-SAP analytical cloud solution can be connected via the API. And in sustainability footprint management in itself, we have a lot of embedded analytics and this I will also show you in the demo for sure. And last, but certainly not the least, the footprint integration. So we were always convinced that sustainability is such an important topic um, and it's even becoming more and more important so that we do not want to only um, give access to the data to sustainability experts in, for example, a central sustainability organization, but we really want to make this data transparent to every business user in the company. And that's why we strongly believe in this integration part. So where we really then integrate the footprints back into SAP S4 HANA and the end-to-end -end processes so that really business users and their applications that they are using on a daily basis, like for example, a purchaser using the purchase requisition application now has access not only to information like for sure the price, but now also has access to the carbon footprint and meaning he or she can now also take carbon information footprints into consideration, into decision-making and by that and also contribute to the overall decarbonization targets. Besides the integration to S4HANA, we also have an integration into IVP, integrated business planning for the supply chain planning process in place. We for sure plan also a deep integration into the SAP sustainability control tower so that for Overall, company-wide holistic, holistic steering and reporting, you have also access to the, to the footprints there. And also outbound, we plan for sure the deep integration into the business network. So that for example, in the future via Ariba, Katina X or other networks, then footprint information can be shared to your customers directly via the network. And remember one last time for sure, always following the um, WBCSD PACT standard. Now you've seen a lot of bubbles here. Let's uh, really look into the system and let's have a look how this yeah, looks like. Sign in again here. And here we go. So this is now SAP Sustainability Footprint Management. This is here the launch pad. And let's start. Um, so accordingly to the, to the journey I, I, I just showed you, let's start with the first part data acquisition here at the bottom, where we are now here in the managed source data um, section. And first step is always to import the master data. And here we have connected an SAP S4 HANA cloud system. And we are now replicating all the data that is residing in this S4 HANA system. And you see here all the objects that we're replicating. So that is, for example, company data, cost centers, plant products, and so on. And maybe let's quickly look into the products and see here the products that we have uh, replicated. So this demo company is a bakery that is um, producing cakes, so namely chocolate cake and strawberry cake. And uh, for that day for sure, purchase um, according uh, raw material, um, such as for example, dark chocolate. And in the next step, you can then define the inventory scopes. I'm not going into detail of um, all the apps, but just that you know, you can really flexibly define your organization boundaries. So for example, you can start with only one plant and then extend over time or focus on, on one country or one region. So this is really flexible and can be configured right here in the, in the application. And then we are already in part two, which is the emission factors part. And there we have this manage emission factor app where you can now import emission factors that can, as said, come from either LCA databases or from suppliers directly. So currently this is working via an Excel upload. However, in uh, yeah, shortly we are planning to deliver an API for retrieving supplier footprints directly. And also we plan an API that um, LCA databases can connect to. But let's look here, for example, into a the eco invent trial version. So, as I mentioned, we have partnerships already today with eco invent and carbon mines. You can um, license their data sets via the SAP store, then you will get the entire data set. So, this here is only a, a small trial with just 12 entries. The entire eco invent data set has almost 10,000 entries. And here you see that, for example, we have here um, cocoa bean production in Cote d'Ivoire. And when you then click on it, 
you get more information like here the product cocobean associate the product sunshine and so on and here you would find the emission factor which is 0.849 kilogram per each kilogram of cocoa beans and you see that you also have classification information directly in here so cpc and hs harmonized system and this means in the next step you can then also map directly to the classifications when they when this is also available in your s4 hana or connected erp system now after we have uploaded the emission factor data sets in the next step we can then map our replicated products to those emission factors and therefore, we have here this, this nice um, managed mappings application, and this is really flexible. So here you can really flexibly map products to emission factors. So for example, let's look here at line item number three. You have here the dark chocolate, and here you have very granular information. So here you received information from the supplier Coco World in Ghana, and this is the emission factor that they provided. However, you most probably won't always have this granular data. So not all suppliers will be able to provide this information. So this means you can, then, for example, for strawberries, we have here under eight, a data set that looks only in Spain. And you have them here a factor for, for Spain. And when you click on it, you also get more information. So here, for example, we map the respective eco invent package for the strawberry production in the open field macro tunnel. So you really get a lot of information and meaning it's always very transparent which emission factor is then actually used. Now we can already move towards the calculation. And for being able to calculate footprints, for the for the material acquisition part, the purchase products, we are all done now because we defined here the mappings. However, for sure, we also need to define out the production activities. And therefore, we have here this manage facilities section. And let's start here with modeling energy flows. So what we are doing in sustainability footprint management is we are always um, yeah, relying on energy information we, we, we are getting from, from, the, from the ERP system, from the energy carriers. And here in this example, we have uh, three energy carriers for cooling water, gas, and power. Those, those are the, the carriers. Energy sources are electricity and gas. We have here um, various resources. So we have a fruit cake assembly line for our strawberry cakes and a chocolate assembly for the chocolate cakes. We also have an oven and a melter. And we also have infrastructures like electricity meters or gas meters. And based on all this information, which again can come either from your ERP database or you can create it directly in here, we can then model the energy flows and let's look into it. We have here this really nice graphical flow modeler. And this now really depicts the production process, really it, it depicts the physical reality within your plant. So here you would see that on the left hand side, there are your energy sources that we just defined. So the gas and the electricity. And on the right hand side, we then have here, for example, the, the, the assembly lines for the chocolate cake and for the strawberry cake. And you see that all the processes, all the steps that happen in between. So for example, you see there's also an oven, there's a cooling system here in between. And what you can now do is really via this arrows now combine all the energy sources. So to define it, for example, now um, electricity goes into the cooling system, but also into the assembly line directly. And then you can define here these meters where you have these meters also in your production plant. And those meter readings are then in the next step used for um, yeah, defining the exact energy consumption as per product line. And then based on your production document, then also can be broken down to the products that were, pur that were produced on the respective line. And for um, emissions that cannot be directly linked into the ERP system, we also have the Manage Allocations app. So here you can really manually assign emissions. So here we did that for, for the for cooling agent as well as methane. And then we currently can define um, yeah, manual allocation. So for example, here we have an allocation rule for the cooling agent. And here we manually defined that with a factor from two to one. So meaning two thirds of this cooling agent is distributed to the chocolate cake and one third to strawberry cakes. And here we also blend some improvements, by the way, that going forward, this can then also be more automated. So for example, based on um, yeah, quantities or volume. Now, the last piece we need is the business transactions. And this also we get directly from our ERP, from our s hana system. And you see here, we are replicating always on a monthly basis. 
So we are aggregating everything, all the movements that happened in this month. So let's, for example, look here into May. And this is also the transaction types that we're replicating. So meaning goods issue, goods receipt, returns, transfers, and so on. So as an example, maybe let's go into the goods received from supplier. And here I would find now all the um, goods we received in the month of May from our supplier. So for example, from Finance Coco Corp, we received 26 kilograms of dark chocolate. Now, the very last piece is to define the calculation. And let's go here into May again. And here, yeah, you can then assign the respective allocation schemes and energy flow. In the next step, you upload information of your energy provider. So the energy bill, meaning the consumed quantity, as well as the CO2E factor. And based on that, then the total CO2E is calculated. Next up is the meter reading information. So in our case, we have five meters uh, in our uh, energy flow model. And now you need to enter the new meter readings. And then based on the previous ones, the consumption is um, automatically calculated. And similar for sure, we also need to add the manual emissions, which we have here just 0.1 ton for methane and cooling action. Now we can, based on all of that, calculate the footprints and look into the results. And here you now see all the different footprints that are calculated. So this is really everything now what is going on in your organization. So you'll see here all the production activities, you see all the resources, you see all the products and all of those have now an individual footprint. And let's go for example here into our chocolate cake. So here you find now the end result, so to say. So the chocolate cake we produced, um, so actually you see here below 187 kilograms, and this has total emissions of nearly four tons of CO2e or roughly 21 kilogram per each kilogram of chocolate cake. At this value, you can now publish and then it gets sent to the S4HANA system and business users then have access to it. But for sure, you now also want to understand further, okay, how is this value actually calculated? And now you can, in this really nice Sankey diagram, really drill down um, each level. So here now in the production, and you see that um, the, the product actually consists of biscuits and dark chocolate, and here are the respective emissions, as well as um, energy, that were used for the um, for the chocolate assembly itself. For sure, this also has emissions. And let's drill down one level more into the chocolate. And then you see, okay, this chocolate I received actually from two suppliers, Coco World and Finest Coco Corp. And we also have here some um, emissions that were assigned by allocation. So really a granular view and yeah, highest level of transparency. And you can even drill one level deeper and even get the exact calculation formula. So for example, here we are in the dark chocolate from the finest Coco Corp. And you would see, okay, we received 26 kilograms. Here you find the exact valuation formula as well as also the emission factor that was used for calculating. And with that, you, you're really achieving a high degree of transparency and auditability. Next, we also provide a lot of analytic capabilities. And we have here this really nice uh, corporate balance. And this always shows you all the inflows and all the outflows. And this is then always uh, in balance. So you see here that, um, yeah, the, the, the most emissions are relating here to other indirect emissions. So meaning, um, yeah, your scope three emissions. And on the outflow side, it's mainly the sold goods. So meaning the, the cakes we sold as well as the closing in inventory. So meaning cakes that we, um, we produced, but have not sold yet. So we took them on, on stock first to, to sell them in the next month or so. And scrolling down, you get a lot of more details, many more graphs. So for example, the top five purchased goods and sold goods. So you see for the purchased goods, um, the highest emissions um, are coming actually from the dark chocolate and therefore not very surprisingly when moving to the salt goods. Also our chocolate cake has much higher emissions than our strawberry cake, which uh, yeah, does contain chocolate. And um, at, at, the, at the bottom, you then also see um, the distribution as per the greenhouse gas categories. So in blue here, other indirect emissions, so meaning scope three, and then um, direct emissions scope one uh, in, in orange and in green, the purchased energy scope two. You can always also drill down one level more when you, for example, want to go into the scope three categories. We also have a trend here um, over time so that you see the, the last months here. Um, so we see actually this trend 
went down. So you were really successfully um, um, bringing down the emissions and also the emissions per, by energy source. So really a lot of analytical um, possibilities which are directly built into um, yeah, the application. Okay, and moving back here to our tenant, let's go also into the transport. So with SAP sustainability footprint management, it is also possible to really calculate all your transport, so inbound as well as outbound. And currently we are doing that by uh, uploading the data um, with, with um, templates, so Excel spreadsheet templates, and all the information that you need to provide is the start location, the end location, as well as the, the weight, the total quantity of the weight of the, of the respective transport. And then we have some um, yeah, routing algorithms in uh, between that then um, create the route, create the lags, so typical transfer points like, like harbors or so, and based on this information and calculate um, the distance and the emissions. For sure, the more information you are having, for example, because it's your own transport, then you um, know the exact transport mode and route, then for sure you can also enter that. And in the next releases, we also plan an integration into um, S4HANA that also information can be leveraged here. And we also plan to provide um, APIs for including then um, SAP transportation management for sure, but also non-SAP TM solutions. And also this app comes with, um, maybe start with that one, comes with um, yeah, enriched analytical capabilities. So here we can then view all our transport data. So let's um, select here our K transport. And we have really here a lot of measures available. So let's, um, for example, look at the CO2E well to wheel emissions for the transport. So for, for the transport experts, you could also select um, well to tank or tank to wheel, but let's look into the, the whole uh, well to wheel cycle. And then you can also select different um, yeah, dimensions, like for example, the month when you want to see a trend over time or the product. So maybe let's start here with the product. So here you would then get directly, okay, our, our baking mixture actually has here the highest CO2E emissions followed by chocolate and, and the strawberries. So meaning, okay, the strawberries you, you, you source here very um, near shore. And you can then add also so that one because let's have a look into our transport mode. Let's load the data here. And here you would then see that actually a ship has the total highest emission followed by truck and rail. For sure, there is also a lot of um, different visualization possibilities. So for example, you can also have um, can have a look into the donut chart or also uh, a line chart, which doesn't make sense here, but which may make sense when we, for example, want to see a trend over time. And yeah, here you would then see have the really the, the, the monthly trend from the from the previous 12 months or from the time that you're selecting. So you see you have really enriched um, transportation capabilities to really define in your hotspots. Talking about transportation hotspot, last app I would like to show you is the new transport routes app because I think this is also a very um, yeah great app. And let's go here into full screen because what this app does is really visualizing all your transport on a, on a world map. So you see that um, the transports are going here to, uh, to Munich because in, in Munich there's our main plant and coming from our suppliers. And um, yeah, you see then also here the transportation lag. So for example, uh, let's, let's scroll in here. Okay, you see here this is the hub of Venice. And you see that in Venice, for example, um, yeah, you, you get then um, a shipment from, from Ghana to Venice via ship. And then this is then sent forward from Venice to um, yeah, the plant 5000, which is the, the plant number for our plant in Munich, and then transported via truck 300 kilometers and uh, respective emissions. And what is also possible is to look at all of this in a heat map. And this then really, again, zoom out on a world map shows you our emission hotspots which are for sure here um, around your supplier locations, um, but also uh, around your, your plant where you're receiving that. And by that, you can then really see, okay, where to start, where does it make sense to really take action to act for yeah, decarbonizing your footprint. And with that, let's go back to the slide 
And um, yeah, before finishing, let's quickly also talk about the business architecture. So um, you just saw sustainability football management. This is running. Uh, laser pointer. Um, sustainability footprint management is running on the SAP business technology platform. And we have this integration into S4HANA, where we have this integration reuse component for extracting business data from the end-to-end -end processes, but also providing the calculated footprints back into the processes. And we are planning then the integration with EHNS environment management, as well as via the business network and sustainability data exchange. We can also add um, data from, from third party providers like the emission factors or connect via API other ERP or other data sources. Then, based on all of that, we're doing the calculation, and the calculated footprints are then, yeah, I mentioned it sent back to us for HANA, or in the future, then also for holistic steering reporting sent to the sustainability control tower, to the business network, sustainability data exchange for sharing the footprints with the customers of our customers. And we also plan open APIs for yeah, including it into any other non-SAP third-party application. So key takeaways from today's session. So with SAP sustainability footprint management, we are really doing a precise calculation of product value chain and corporate footprints. And we are always doing that based on actual data and energy flow models. So really we are replicating here the physical reality in your plant and all this results always in emission balancing on a corporate level. The implementation is quite simple as we are just integrating and vastly reusing data that is already existing in your ERP system. And all the results we are calculating are really auditable. They provide a high degree of transparency. I showed you this formula, for example, and um, yeah, with that, you can really use them for voluntary reporting the footprints, for example, to your customers or um, to any other um, stakeholders you want to have access to. So to summarize, SAP Sustainability Footprint Management really helps you in gaining environmental insights across the cradle to gate value chain and to take climate action by leveraging ERP data and logic. And if you are now want to try it out by, by your own and really play into the system, I highly recommend you browsing it to our SAP Sustainable Footprint Management free trial version. So um, you can then really sign up for, for 30 days. So as that totally free of charge and then play in the system. We also provide guided tours so that you can then just click through it and get some recommendations so that you just get an impression how the system works and uh, the various uh, yeah, things that you can actually do with the system. And with that, thank you. And yeah, I'm sure we have uh, plenty of questions now. So back to you, Larissa. Thank you, Gunther. Thank you, Nico, for this insightful uh, presentation and great demo. And we have a lot of questions in the chat. And uh, I'm going to start from the top. And um, there were at least two questions around whether there are additional courses available to learn how to manage um, the program, how to manage the process. Could you, can you recommend something? Yeah, so I, I, I can take this question because we are currently um, heavily working on additional content. I mean, first of all, I, I can recommend you um, reading through my blog post. So I, I, I posted an introduction blog post and currently also on a, on a weekly basis, provide deep dive blog posts on these five product capabilities. And we are working on a, on a learning journey, which also will be free of charge in the SAP Learning Hub. Um, yeah, it, it should be available um, end of June, beginning of, of July. And also we are currently working on an open SAP course, which um, provides the, the, the product picture. So we have a lot of speakers. So Gunther and myself are speakers, but really a lot of experts from within SA, SAP from the various organizations. So this will be a three week course with a final exam at the end. And um, yeah, we plan to publish this course um, uh, mid uh, September, so after the summer break, and for sure, then we also highly recommend everyone to to sign up and um, free of charge, uh, do the course, and then uh, hopefully pass the the final exam. 
Okay, thank you on that. I've just uh, posted the link to Nico's uh, blog post in the chat. So please leverage this um, on finding additional resources and assets. So the next question is, can I also access ERP data from a SAP on-prem system for recording, analyzing my footprint data? This is um, uh, possible with um, SAP S4HANA on-premise. So um, with um, SAP S4HANA 2021 and later, I, I must say, this is uh, integrated out of the box for data acquisition and also for integrating the footprints. Um, for data acquisition for older uh, S4 releases or SAP ECC, we have this APIs that can be leveraged. I mean, this then requires a small IT project, but it is possible to also connect um, on premise. However, important to know is that the integration of the calculated footprints, this is only possible with S4HANA Cloud and S4HANA on premise 2021 and later. Right. Thank you for that. I hope this helps. The next question is, would it be possible to talk around accounting entries as part of carbon accounting? Um, not sure what the question is about. I guess this was uh, maybe related to the comment I made it uh, originally or earlier in the call on, uh, on carbon accounting in S4. Um, I would assume this is about the green ledger where we really go to full bookkeeping principles and full transactional accounting over time. Um, maybe the only general statement we can make is that from a um, principles perspective, this follows the, you know, the principles that we know from finance mainly, right? So um, uh, it, it is following those accounting principles, but I'm not sure what the exact focus of the question is beyond that. All right, then I can only encourage Sandeep to clarify the question if he's mm -hmm. still in, this, in the audience. And we will move to the next question. Where does the calculated PCF start? Yeah, so they, they are stored in um, sustainability footprint management and then also transferred to, to S4HANA where we have this integration um, component um, where then the, the data, I mean, those that you're published, the footprints that you're published are then also stored into, into S4HANA and integration component. And from there, then the, the S4HANA applications can, um, can access the data. All right, thank you for that. The next question is, can you please highlight why an integration with EHS EM is planned, which functions are available in EHS EM, but not in SFM? And is an integration optional or mandatory to calculate the company footprint? You wanna get started, Nico, or should I? I, I, I can get started. So, I mean, first of all, really important, it is not mandatory. So, um, <laughs> I mean, the, the calculation that I showed uh, was without integration with EH and SEM and, and you saw uh, <laughs> you, you don't need um, the integration. Um, however, if you have EH and SEM already uh, in place or, or planning to do so, for sure, it makes a lot of sense because EH and SEM um, brings um, a lot more possibilities, especially with regards to your scope one and two emissions. So you can calculate them at a much more granular level. And then via the integration, we plan to for sure reuse the scope one and two data um, for, um, for example, uh, including it into the overall carbon, um, corporate carbon balance, but also breaking it down then, then to, the, to the product level. And important to know is that EHNS EM for sure has many more capabilities beyond carbon. So like, like waste management or, or, or much, much more. So for, for those purposes, you absolutely would need an, an EH, EHS EM. Okay, thank you very much for that. The next question is, the SAP product footprint management is now SAP sustainability footprint management, correct? How yeah. does the sustainability footprint management relate to product footprint management for clean operations? Okay, um, so first, 
um, the, we have renamed uh, the product footprint management into sustainability footprint management. So it's still the same uh, product. But uh, what we have seen in the demo is that the, the scope and, and the reach of um, SFM uh, has increased dramatically, right? We, we are now also covering a corporate perspective. Nico has shown that, um, and there's more functionality. So we, the, the reason was very simple. We thought that product footprint management is simply too narrow for the scope that product does. And that's why we uh, have renamed it into SFM. So there's not a lot of more background to that renaming than that, <laughs> that decision. So um, that, was, um, that was one. Now on, on PFM for COP, that is a, a product which we have originally uh, developed from the meat market perspective, and it is now an integral part of, of SFM. So it's actually very much used uh, in, in, in what Nico has shown. So we have merged these functionalities uh, all under the uh, um, you know, umbrella of SFM and it's one product. So uh, short answer is it's, it's uh, functionally part of what you have seen. Right, thank you for that. The next question is, hi, Nikon Gunther. Thank you for the insightful presentation. I work for an SAP partner company and we are having issues with data import into SFM transportation. What is the best course of action? Um, yeah, maybe I can take that. So, um, um, yes, yeah, sorry to hear that. I mean, uh, the, the best option is always to, to, to raise a ticket because then it's um, getting routed di directly to, to the respective colleagues from our development organization and they will ensure that this is solved um, yeah, really a, as soon as possible. If you face any issues there, feel also free to just shoot me a, a direct email and then I, I, I will forward it to the respective colleagues that are, that are responsible for the transportation part. Thank you, Nico. Thank you for this great offer. I hope this helps. The next question is for footprint analytics apps, whether we need separate license or SAP SFP license would be sufficient. Yeah, so for the for this um, built in analytics that I showed you, no additional license is required. So this is included in your um, in your SFM license. For sure, if you want to leverage the API for, for integrating the footprints into Analytics Cloud, because you want to build your own dashboards, for example, then you would require an, an SAC license. But for the dashboards that I showed you, no, no separate license required. Okay, thank you for that. The next is, hi Nico, is there any calculation process engine, CPE in SFM, also for emission factor calculation? Uh, no, so the, 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 the emission factors really needs to be uh, imp imported from the from the various sources um, I mentioned. So meaning uh, LCA uh, industry average databases are for sure coming directly from, from suppliers. So we are leveraging already calculated emission factors then for, for calculating our footprints. So we are not an LCA software tool, so to say, but really a carbon accounting solution that's leveraging L LCA um, um, numbers. Okay, the next one is how to do LCA in SAP. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Nico already started to address it. I, I give it a stab and please Nico, feel free to add. Um, so I, first it's important, we are not covering uh, a classical LCA approach here with, with uh, SFM that, that you have seen. Um, um, while of course we are, we are using and we are uh, able of using important entities like emission factors from uh, databases like Eco Invent and so on. But we are not. We don't have the aim to have a classical LCA product or an LCA approach. We believe, as I explained earlier in the slides, it's very important. We actually calculate the footprint based on the production reality, based on the material flow, based on on the real energy flow that happens for a particular production so that we get closer to actuals and really have that living actuals also in the system as we optimize, as we change our, our uh, production processes and so on. So that's why classical LCA from our end is, is helpful, but it's 
it's rather static and and we are going into a a hybrid approach but where we also over time uh, calculate and use more and more actuals so uh, that's that's my view in a nutshell nico anything you would want to add no um absolutely and, and i mean um you, you've seen also on the demo we, we are really uh, doing this um periodic calculation at scale so really having this footprints not um one once upon a time and um, like you do it in SCA, but really periodically so every month we are, we are calculating these footprints and this is then really also your opportunity um, to see then also if your actions pay out actually. So um, when you now, for example, change the supplier and then immediately the months uh, after you would then see the positive effects. All right. The next question is, is uh, SDX a separate license add-on? Yeah, um, it has a separate license. Um, and the reason is this uh, modular you know consumption that we that i explained and in this particular area we we got clear asks to say well if customers have already calculated their uh, own footprints or if they have built their own tools to do so they still want to you know exchange a footprint so that's why it's it's a separate entity and it's also because we want to embed the sdx into our networks and, and, and have this available as a network service, so to say. Uh, and, and, and that's why it has its own um, you know, license, but it, it has a very low entry level barrier, I would say. Okay, thank you for that. The next question is connected to LCA. It says, is LCA has been planned with SAP PLM? Not sure whether it was already answered. Yeah, maybe I'm what I interpret into the question is um, typically when you design a new product uh, early in the life cycle and that you do with the means of, of PLM software, then many organizations start to also plan a uh, footprint uh, alongside and historically customers have been using LCA to do this um, as Nico or, or already said this is typically done once and then this this number or this factor is used uh, while we go for you know towards actuals and where we are going to the you know dynamic footprint as it is really produced in in along the production process so Still, I think it makes sense over time that we integrate more and more also with the earlier phases of product lifecycle and, and uh, that we are looking into uh, to see how we connect it to design systems. Um, but again, we are not doing an LCA approach ourselves, right? So uh, integration, deeper integration into PLM and the earlier phases of lifecycle, absolutely. That's something we, we will tackle over time. Um, but again, there we also want to focus on the actuals. All right. The next question is whether SAP SFP includes cradle to grave currently or only cradle to gate? So currently it is cradle to gate. However, um, we, we are plan to address and also um, downstream emissions in, 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 in next releases so that we then also cover bread to crave. And I mean, maybe um, I, I can also mention that the good thing is for sure it is a cloud product and really we have um, bi-weekly uh, sprint cycles, meaning every two weeks we are releasing new features and functions and you as our customers then directly get those new features and functions included in your in your license. So meaning um, as soon as we have the, the downstream emissions then available, it is then simply pushed into your tenant and then you, you, you have access to it. Right, thank you for that. Um, I have in the chat the explanation to the question around accounting and entries. Uh, with reference, my earlier question on accounting entry question is if there are any journal entry posted based on carbon emission calculated, or there is no journal entry posted as part of the process. Okay, okay. I think that's very much in the direction I, I thought it would be. Well, let me first say how and which ways uh, the recording of or the, the capturing of, of carbon footprints 
in or into the green ledger that's still uh, not completely uh, finalized but in in my mind there will be generally speaking two ways how you get footprint into the ledger the first one and the most dominant one in from my perspective is actually via sfm so um, instead of booking you know the entry is a bottom up you know per transaction of course it would be um, a very efficient and also elegant that we publish footprint into the ledger from SFM. And, and Nico showed this button of publish, where we publish it today already into uh, S4. So one way of getting that data into the ledger, it, it will be SFM. The details how we do this still to be disclosed. At the same point in time, of course, there will also be the, the, the possibility to manually or ent enter, you know, um, uh, footprints uh, per transaction in, into the journal or uh, the ledger. But again, there, there needs to be, you know, we, we will disclose more information of how, how that actually works over time. Right. I hope this clarifies Sandeep's question. The next question, is there any scope item GCI planned for waste and recycling companies with respect to sustainability footprint management? Uh, maybe I can take that one. Um, well, generally speaking, the reporting on important metrics like GRI and so on, uh, we do in the SAP Sustainability Control Tower. So SAP uh, Sustainability footprint management is not meant to be an ESG tool or a, a you know a tool for reporting and and uh, analytics in general across all categories of sustainability. The carbon side, for example, is done in SFM and then exported into into control tower. So the GRI related items and especially waste management related ones uh, we handle in uh, we handle in. Uh, SCT in general and, and get it in there. Of course, we also have dedicated components for waste management, for example, um, in our, our stack if, if there needs to be a more detailed handling, but that's not subject to SFM. Okay, thank you for that. The next one is, do we have standard out of the box connector available for SAP S4 HANA public cloud? Also, how is the governments of SF SFM managed? Yeah, so um, as for HANA Cloud, we have the, the out of the box uh, in, in integration available, and um, yeah, governance is then handled um, according to your S4 HANA system and then can also be um, uh, managed in the, in the BGP cockpit as the solution is running on the BGP. All right. Um, the next question is, hi, Gunther, by 2030, Germany is planning to reduce the carbon emission by 65%, whether companies in needs to submit their carbon footprint early, uh, yearly to uh, European Union or respective countries, how company, companies are regulated? Um, yeah, so... First, I think the question is in general about regulations for carbon. And now um, there are different approaches in different countries and, and there's local approaches. Um, so far, there is no, at least talking about the European Union for a second, there is no mandatory uh, standard for full disclosure of on a level of, of carbon accounting. But there's things in the pipeline which, which are very likely to come. So uh, take, for example, the carbon border adjustment mechanism called CBAM. Uh, this, this is a standard which is coming and that will require, um, you know, also disclosure on the level of what we have discussed in this session. So um, I think there's more and more coming. And that's the regulatory side of the house. But what we are also observing is many companies just push their suppliers to give them the corporate uh, footprint, uh, sorry, the product footprint. Um, and, and that is also creating a lot of pull on, on those organizations. So there is, from my perspective, and it's hard to look into the crystal ball, right? And we are not making the legislations ourselves, but 
there is regulations coming, but equally important is the voluntary side or the side which is pushed by, by your supply chain, so to say. All right, thank you. There are two more questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, hi, Nico Gunter, could you help with an example use case on how SAP BTP could be used in customizing SAP SFM functionalities? And the second one, do we have global scope index for sustainability footprint management with respect to industrial sector segments Classic calculator, transportation, corporate, and products. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe to, the, to the first question, um, the, the, the customization in, in, in BTP. I mean, what, what you can for sure customize is the, is the access right. So we have the different access roles. However, you can now not um, customize the, the the application itself. So meaning the the, the calculation logic or something like that. So I'm not not sure what what in, to which direction this question goes um, exactly. Yeah, maybe I can interpret it, but I'm not sure if <laughs> the second part is exactly what, what, what I would read into it. Um, so there was this question of industry sectors and um, are, and I could interpret this in, in the sense of will the calculation and management of, of carbon footprint on product as well as on corporate level be industry specific? And um, I, I think, the answer is yes, there is a clear industry dimension in it. And you also see, um, you know, standardization activities in different industries. Take the Together for Sustainability initiative in chemicals, for example, TFS, uh, but there are others as well. Uh, we are highly active, for example, also in automotive with Catena X and the usage of, of both SFM as well as SDX as an option in Catena X. So, there is definitely a industry specific element to it. Now, if we cover this in specific content or specific calculation types that remains to be seen so far, the SFM is, is, is uh, pretty general and generic and can be expanded accordingly. Um, but yes, we are looking into industry specific standards and industry specific uh, variations. I hope I I had a correct interpretation of the question. Okay, thank you both. I hope uh, Hanishan is uh, satisfied with these answers. And uh, I can't see more questions in the chat. And I think we are a bit over time now, but uh, uh, thank you to this uh, to the audience for being such uh, active and bringing up all these questions. This is very enriching, also for our speakers. Uh, let give give the audience one more minute for the final question, and then we can uh, finish this session. Let's see if there will be one more question. And as I've already indicated, the PDF uh, will be available in the description to the video on YouTube shortly after this session have finished. And we receive a positive feedback from Hanishan. He is satisfied, thanks for the answers. With this, I think it's a great uh, moment to say again, thank you to the audience uh, for being so active, for being so attentive to our content and of course thank you to Gunther and Nico for bringing up their expertise and uh, explaining their, uh, their topic in such uh, details and of course for showing the demo. Thank you very much from our side as well. Thanks a lot everyone. Thank you so much and bye bye and hope to see you in one of our upcoming streams. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.